Hi, I'm Matt Pratton. I'm the Senior Analyst for Eastern Europe here at Intelligence Fusion. And in this video, I'll provide a very quick update on what we've been tracking over the over the weekend. As no doubt you may have noticed that there's been quite a lot, quite a bit going on in Russia. On approximately Friday night, we noticed that there was supposedly a friendly fire attack on Wagner Group forces in Ukraine. And this supposed friendly fire attack prompted the owner of Wagner Group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, to gather a contingent of mercenaries and, and begin an, an, an advance on Russia. First of all, pushing east into rostov on Blast and supposedly taking the Southern Military District HQ in rostov on don From there, proceeding north, going through Voronezh Oblast, then up to Lepetsk, and even reaching the outer edges of Tula Oblasts. During these chain of events, there were various clashes, uh, troop sightings, troop movements, uh, air, uh, uh, air activity, and even security operations occurring in Moscow, which included uh, deployments, uh, deployments of troops, as well as operations, uh, one known as Operation Fortress. However, barely after these event, uh, this advance on Moscow began, within 24 hours, it appears that uh, Wagner Group owner Yevgeny Prigozhin has accepted an agreement to de uh, uh, to de-escalate and cease his advance on Moscow, and move to Bel uh, and move on to uh, live in Belarus. Now. These these series of events have been quite un, uh, quite unprecedented. In fact, it would likely be on par with the sinking of the Moskva, which occurred last year, where Russia's prime, uh, Russia's flag cruise missile ship was sunk and uh, uh, was sunk by uh, Ukrainian anti ship missiles. So what we've got at the moment is what would appear to be a significant uh, opportunity for Ukrainian forces and Russian and, and also Russian dissidents to capitalize on the situation and cause and uh, and use it to their advantage. In addition to the opportunities that uh, both Ukrainian and Russian dissidents can capitalize on, interestingly enough, with these recent turn of events, we haven't really noticed much of a change um, at the, in, in the tactical situation with the Russia-Ukraine war. Despite a significant amount of Wagner Group forces uh, uh, leaving Ukraine and heading towards Moscow, we haven't really noticed any sort of new ground being taken by uh, taken by Ukrainian forces. The supposed uh, uh, this advance on Moscow doesn't appear to have created a situation which would allow uh, which would allow Ukrainians to easily ga uh, regain territory. There's also a few other factors to consider here, and they're quite significant. Now, in prior reporting, we've came across indications that there's there have long there have been long-standing rifts between uh, Wagner Group and Ru and Russian forces both within Ukraine and even up to the le uh, leadership level but uh, significant rifts between Yevgeny Prigozhin as well uh, and in particular with Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and even Chief of the General Staff General Valery Gerasimov now, uh, Prigozhin's advance has, uh, well, not only just exacerbated these rifts and sort of created a situation where Prigozhin and Shoigu are now incapable of, of working of working together, and even a case of even Wagner Group and Russian forces on the ground being able to work together. It also casts significant doubt on on uh, President on President Putin's lead, leadership uh, uh, of, uh, and control over Russia. What makes this quite uh, quite significant is that. When it comes to uh, this sort this sort of activity, what Prigozhin appears to, appears to have carried out is something which is a direct challenge to President Vladimir Putin. When you consider a track record of opponents to President Vladimir Putin, opponents have not been allowed to essentially well get away from, uh, come away from such an attempt unscathed. In fact, direct opponents to President Putin have been imprisoned or killed for well much less. Uh, for example, take what's been what's happened to uh, uh, to Alexei Navalny. Although, when you consi when considering uh, considering that track record, what is still very uh, uh, very important to point out is while Prigozhin and uh, his contingent of Wagner Group mercenaries were able to uh, essentially go back into Russia and adv and begin advancing towards Moscow. The fact that all of this uh, w all of this ended within approximately twenty four hours does indicate uh, a, lev a level of control. So when considering the effects of what's been happening, I suppose we should, should really begin with, with identifying how this could be perceived internationally as well as domestically. Internationally, what's happened here is that you've had a direct challenge to President, uh, President, uh, President Putin. And when considering the track record of those who directly challenged President Putin, the fact that Yevgeny Prigozhin at this point in time 
does not appear to have been imprisoned and last and last I'm aware he's still still alive and well when considering his current status and track record president putin would appear to be would appear to be perceived as quite weak on the international stage especially when it comes to uh, when it comes to perceptions of putin's strength uh, by those uh, by other members of the brics forum so brazil russia india china and south africa in fact perceptions on putin's uh, strength as a leader in russia would likely be quite serious in ter- in, uh, in china's eyes especially however when considering that, despite the fact that uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin was able to take a contingent of Wagner Group and begin advancing on Moscow, the fact that this all ended within 24 to 48 hours, and there's been a lack of any kind of support for for Yevgeny Prigozhin outside of Wagner Group, haven't really come across any other oligarchs uh, getting behind Prigozhin, and more importantly, haven't noticed any kind of support being shown towards Prigozhin by the FSB. Or the or the Russia's or the uh, or the Russia's Security Council, for that matter. So, whilst internationally Putin would appear quite weak, given how this has all transpired in, sh- in such a short period of time, domestically President Putin would still appear to have quite a strong grip on power and, and still be able to ma- maintain control over Russia. Although, when looking ahead, there is certainly, uh, in terms of the Russia-Ukraine war, there is certainly an opportunity for Ukrainian forces and Russian dissidents to capitalise on. When considering what happened in the wake of the sinking of the Moskva, the uh, the propaganda victory this presented to Ukrainian forces and and how much confidence this uh, this this uh, boosted amongst Ukraine and in, and the uh, and the international community who supported Ukraine. Given what lies ahead, given the significance of what's been happening, Ukraine now has an opportunity to capitalise on much in the same way it did with the sinking of the Moskva. Furthermore, when considering that the, in recent months there's been a growing amount of dissident, uh, dissident actions within Russia, specifically in Belgorod Oblast, with the, uh, with the emergence of two groups, one known as the Russia Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion, when considering the emergence of those two groups and their actions in Belgorod Oblast, these recent chain of events may actually uh, embolden these groups to carry out further attacks and create further, and then create further perceptions of domestic weakness of, of, of uh, towards President Putin. Anyway, that's all we have for the time being. We continue to monitor this situation as well as ke- uh, keep up to date with what's going on with the Russia-Ukraine war. So, in order to maintain awareness of what is happening, what it could mean, and what could happen next. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with our reports, as well as subscribe to our Discord server, where you can keep up up to date with our with our monitoring of well, just about anywhere, as well as have the opportunity to uh, to communicate directly with our analysts. Thanks very much for watching.